Hello everyone, welcome to Memo Neat. Welcome back. So I am Aprajita, your chemistry SME. So how is the preparation going guys? I hope the preparation for BPT 5 is going on in full swings because there are only now three days left for it. So on Sunday, that is 30th June, you are having your BPT 5 and the chapter that is going to come for chemistry is electrochemistry, right? We have been studying electrochemistry since the last two days. So today is our last session for electrochemistry. So do you remember what we did in the last class? In the last class, we talked about the uh, metallic conduction and the electrolytic conduction. Ki what is the difference between it? We studied different terms like resistance, conductance, resistivity, conductivity. Then we studied about the molar conductivity, specific molar conductivity, right? Limiting molar conductivity, all of these terms we understood. Then we studied the Kirchhoff's laws, right? Ki how the conductivity varies with the concentration. So the variation of uh, conductivity, we studied Kirchhoff laws and everything. Okay, so today our main focus will be on the electrolytic cell. So we have already studied about the electrochemical cell in our first session. So those students who have not watched the first and the second videos yet, please go and watch that. And I have given you one question at the end for both the sessions. So please do comment the answer in the comment section of YouTube. I have not found any answer till now. It means you are not practicing the numericals. So students, this is very important because in electrochemistry, if you look at the PYQs, so the most number of questions asked for electrochemistry are numericals. So if you are not going to uh, solve the numericals, you are going to lose many marks. So that's why I am giving you numericals to practice in the Telegram channel also and here also, but I'm not getting any comments. So at least you can comment the answer. It will just take two minutes. I've also told you how to solve it. It's just that you need to solve and give the answer in the comment section. So I'll be waiting for your comments. Okay, please do comment in the comment section. All right, so we have studied about electrochemical cell already. Today we will be talking about the electrolytic cell and electrolysis. Okay, and then we will be talking about the different types of batteries that we have. Okay, so only two topics are left that I will be covering in today's session. Okay, so let us start with the first topic which is electrolytic cell and electrolysis. So students, what do you mean by an electrolytic cell? So I have covered the difference between electrochemical and electrolytic cell in the first lecture only. So electrolytic cell are the ones where electrical energy is converted to chemical energy. Now what does that mean? It means that electrical energy is used to carry out a non-spontaneous chemical reaction. Non-spontaneous chemical reaction means that will not happen on its own. So we will be requiring some source of energy to carry that reaction. So in the case of electrolytic cell, electrical energy will be used to carry out a non-spontaneous chemical reaction or a chemical process. Okay, so that means that some external source of voltage it is used to drive a chemical process or a chemical reaction. So we will be attaching any external source of voltage, be it can be a cell, it can be a battery to uh, your uh, cell to carry out the chemical reaction. The very basic electrolytic cell, I will be giving you a brief idea about it, like a general idea about the electrolytic cell. Ki how does it look? So have a look here. So here you can see students that there are two metal electrodes, okay. One is the cathode and the other one is the anode. So attached to negative terminal of battery, the one is cathode and to positive it's anode. Okay, now there will be an electrolyte solution, the one that dissociates on passing current through it, okay. So it will give you cations and anions. So obviously opposite charges attract you all know that opposite charges attract each other. So what will happen? The cations that are positively charged, they will move towards the cathode, which is negatively charged. Okay. And they will get discharged there. Similarly, the anions from the solution are going to move towards the anode. 
okay which is positively charged and they will get discharged there so this is how electrolysis happens and this is an example of electrolytic cell you might have studied about the electrolytic reduction of the metals also like or metal uh, substances which is used for the metallurgy to extract the metal see very common uh, cell is having let's say these are two copper electrodes okay so what happens at the cathode is the and the electrolyte that we are taking would be copper sulfate so there will be copper ions and there will be sulfate ions in the solution okay so copper ions will move to the cathode so at cathode what will happen reduction means these uh, copper ions will gain two electrons and they will convert to copper and they will get deposited at the cathode okay copper will start getting deposited on the cathode whereas at anode now obviously sulfate ions will move there but in this case what happens the anode is also copper we have taken it to be copper so what will happen the copper from this anode will come into the solution like this so copper metal will lose two electron it will convert to copper ions and it will come into the solution so what happens is the concentration of copper ions in the solution remains same because it remains constant because the amount of copper ions getting deposited on the cathode will be equal to the amount equivalent amount of copper ions will come from the anode so this uh, actually cell or this method is used for the purification of copper using metallurgy right in metallurgy what happens is so what we do here is that the anode is taken to be impure copper which we want to purify so and the cathode is a thin strip of pure copper तो जो भी कॉपर यहाँ पर हम निकालेंगे प्योर करके वो सब कैथोड पर डिपॉजिट होता रहेगा सो यहाँ से फ्रॉम द एनोड द कॉपर विल स्टार्ट गेटिंग डिजोल्व इन टू द सोल्यूशन इट विल गो इन टू द सोल्यूशन एंड फ्रॉम सोल्यूशन कॉपर आइंस विल गेट डिस्चार्ज एट द कैथोड एंड कॉपर गेट स्टार्टेड स्टार्टिंग डिपॉजिटेड ऑन द कैथोड तो यहाँ पर डिपॉजिट होना जो है वो शुरू हो जाएगा सो अल्टीमेटली यू विल सी कि द साइज ऑफ द एनोड विल डिक्रीज विद टाइम एंड साइज ऑफ कैथोड विल इंक्रीज okay so in this case this is used for the purification of copper and jobe impurities hongi they will settle down which we call as anode mud okay this is how purification takes place not just this electrolytic reduction is used to extract many metals like sodium potassium from their halides from their molten halides like from sodium chloride potassium chloride molten mixture leke uski electrolysis karte hain hum and we get sodium metal okay similarly aluminum ke liye electrolytic reduction is done from cryolite okay in hall harold's process so that you will study uh, in metallurgy and this is the idea that i am giving you about the electrolytic cell so what is happening that when current starts passing through it the movement of ion starts okay so the ions from the sorry the metal from the anode starts dissolving into the solution into your electrolyte and the ions from the electrolyte starts getting deposited at the cathode so what is happening some external source of electricity that is external voltage is used to carry out a chemical reaction okay so that's what happens in the electrolytic cell now you know students to give a quantitative treatment about the electrolysis or the electrolytic cell we have two laws that were given by faraday so quantitative treatment means ki how much electricity would be required ki if you have a certain amount of electrolyte or certain amount of solution kitna current pass karna chahiye how much electricity is required that's also important na that's not that knowledge also is important to carry out the processes so that's what was given by faraday so faraday's law of electrolysis governs that during the process of electrolysis when the substances are deposited on electrodes ki jab substance aapke deposit honge electrodes pe then uh, what happens let's see the first law so first law states students that the mass of any substance which is deposited or liberated at any electrode is directly proportional to the quantity of electricity passed 
दिस इज वेरी सिंपल ओके कि कितना मास ऑफ सब्सटेंस आपका डिपॉजिट हो रहा है या लिब्रेट हो रहा है एट एनी इलेक्ट्रॉड इट विल बी प्रपोर्शनल टू द क्वांटिटी ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी पास्ट ओके सो क्यू इज द चार्ज ओके इन कूलम्स सो नाउ यू नो वॉट क्यू इज चार्ज क्या होता है यू माइट हैव स्टार्टेड इट इन फिजिक्स इट इज इक्वल टू करंट इन टू टाइम बिकॉज करंट इज चार्ज पासिंग थ्रू सम सब्सटेंस पर यूनिट टाइम ना तो चार्ज क्या होगा अमाउंट ऑफ चार्ज विल बी करंट इन टू टाइम ओके सो डब्ल्यू विच इज द मास ऑफ आइंस लिबरेटेड इन ग्राम्स ओके इट इज डायरेक्टली प्रपोर्शनल टू आई इन टू टी ओके सो इफ आई रिमूव दिस आई Uh, its proportionality constant it becomes z into i into t okay so z is constant and it is called the electrochemical equivalent of the ion all right uh, let's say if i am uh, talking about the current efficiency so we will it will be given as eta upon 100 okay isko multiply kar denge eta upon 100 so what is this electrochemical equivalent that is uh, z so let's say if current of 1 ampere is passed for 1 second to q1 ho jayega okay so if q is 1 so then w would be equal to z right agar 1 hai yahan par ye bhi 1 hai to w would be equal to z no so we can say students that the electrochemical equivalent is defined as when a current of 1 ampere is passed through the mass of iron deposited for a second and its unit is gram per coulomb so you know na ki coulomb is the elect uh, unit of electric charge i hope you have studied it in physics right so um let's say if i am i'll tell you how this uh, Nine six five double zero values come. So let's say I am having any reaction like uh, deposition of silver ions is there. Okay. So what I can see is uh, in this uh, particular reaction that one mole of electrons, right? One mole of electrons will be required for the reduction of one mole of silver ions, right? Okay, from the stoichiometry, we can calculate the amount of electricity. Now you know what is the charge on one electron. Can you tell me? The charge on one electron is one point six into ten to the power minus nineteen coulomb. So I need to know what how many electrons do I need? I need one mole of electrons. So charge on one mole of electrons. How much will be in class? One mole means Avogadro's number six point zero two three into ten to the power twenty three multiplied by one point six into ten to the power minus nineteen. Okay, so जब इसको solve करेंगे, yes, the value will come out to be nine six four eight seven coulomb. Now this nine six four eight seven coulomb is known as one Faraday of charge. Okay, so is for making our calculations easy, we take it as nine six five double zero. Okay. तो अगर कहीं पर गिवन नहीं है न्यूमेरिकल में यू कैन टेक नाइन सिक्स फाइव डबल जीरो इफ इट इज गिवन दो इट यू कैन टेक इट एज नाइन सिक्स फोर इट सेवन ओनली सो दैट इज नोन एज दी वन फैर डे ऑफ चार्ज तो इट मीन्स फॉर रिडक्शन ऑफ वन मोल ऑफ सिल्वर आइंस आई रिक्वायर वन फैर डे ऑफ चार्ज ओके सो वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट सो वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दी वन मोल ना सो द यूनिट्स वुड बी कूलम पर मोल सो वन फैर डे इज नाइन सिक्स फाइव डबल जीरो कूलम पर मोल ओके so that was the first law of uh, like faraday's first law where we got to know ki the amount of substance that is deposited or liberated at any electrode will be proportional to the quantity of electricity passed and the quantity of electricity passed can be calculated from the stoichiometry of the reaction okay now let's move on to the second law faraday's second law it is also closely related to the first one only so students the second uh, law states that uh, when the same quantity of electricity is passed through different electrolytes the masses of different ions that are liberated at the electrodes are directly proportional to their chemical equivalent weights okay so what do you understand from here in this particular law 
that if you have two different electrolytes and you are passing the same amount of electricity to those two electrolytes so obviously different ions will be liberated but the masses of those different ions liberated at the electrode will be directly proportional to the equivalent weight so equivalent weight kya hoga class the mass of the atom okay whatever particular atom you have divided by the number of electrons required to reduce the cation okay मीन्स कितने इलेक्ट्रॉन्स रिक्वायर्ड हैं उससे आप डिवाइड कर दोगे यू विल गेट द केमिकल इक्विवेलेंट वेट ओके लाइक यू कैन सी हियर द अमाउंट लाइक डब्ल्यू अपॉन वन अपॉन डब्ल्यू टू विल बी इक्वल टू ई वन अपॉन ई टू नाउ डब्ल्यू वन इज जेड वन आई टी यू नो दैट ओके एंड जेड टू आई टी बिकॉज द अमाउंट ऑफ करेंट पास इज सेम राइट ई वन अपॉन ए टू तो आई टी आई टी कैंसिल हो जाएगा मीन्स चार्ज विल कैंसिल तो यू विल से दैट जेड वन अपॉन जेड टू विल बी ऑल्सो इक्वल टू ई वन अपॉन ई टू तो दैट इज ऑल्सो प्रपोर्शनल टू द इक्विवेलेंट वेट ओके लाइक वी आर सेंग की जो इलेक्ट्रोकेमिकल इक्विवेलेंट है दैट इज योर जेड इट विल ऑल्सो बी प्रपोर्शनल टू द इक्विवेलेंट वेट सो ई इज इक्वल टू ई इज डायरेक्टली प्रपोर्शनल टू जेड सो ई इज इक्वल टू एफ जेड जहाँ पे एफ आपका क्या है फैराडे इज कॉन्स्टेंट नाइन सिक्स फाइव डबल जीरो कूलम पर मोल सो आई टोल्ड यू ना the one faraday is equal to charge on one electron multiplied by the avogadro's number okay so if you want to find out ki how many faradays are required so you just have to uh, take the number of electrons passed and divide it with the avogadro's number okay so that is about uh, the faraday's law i hope you have understood both the laws now we will be seeing the products students what are the products that are formed during the electrochemical oh, sorry electrolytic cell we are discussing electrolytic cell only na so i'll be taking the example of nacl whenever the electrolysis of nacl happens so what are the products and how you are getting the products so uh, first of all students the product of electrolysis it actually depends on the nature of material being electrolytes of course which type of electrolyte we are taking but it will also depend on the type of electrodes that are being used okay so there are two types of electrodes one is active one is inert okay so inert electrodes are the ones which do not participate in the reaction okay like platinum or gold electrodes are there okay they will not participate in the reaction they will only act as the source and sink for electrons but if the electrode is reactive like if it's an active electrode it will participate in the reaction remember the one that i showed you for the copper one so for copper in this case we had two active electrodes both were participating in the reaction okay means this one was participating in the reaction in this case uh, so that will happen for the active electrode okay so it means that the products are uh, different for reactive and inert electrodes if the even if the electrolyte is same okay it will also depend on the different oxidizing and reducing species and their electrode potentials that is also very important so if there are more than one ion so if there is only one cation let's say that will go to the uh, cathode and get reduced but let's say if we are having more than one cation so which one will get reduced or both of them will get reduced no right in that case we will find out which one gets reduced using the standard electrode potential okay now one more thing you should know that some of the electrochemical processes that are feasible but kinetically they are so slow that at low voltages they cannot take place okay so we need to apply some extra potential to it which we call as over potential which makes these processes difficult to occur okay so i told you we are taking the example of sodium chloride now we will be taking molten nacl because of course solid nacl to will be a bad conductor na if it is taken in a solid form but you need to take molten nacl because molten form mein the sodium and the chloride ions will be free to move and they will be acting as an electrolyte now in this case the products okay what are the products are sodium metal chlorine gas plus hydrogen gas is also the product see there are three uh, products that are uh, taking place in this reaction of course we will be getting uh, sodium metal and uh, 
chlorine gas apart from that one more product is there okay if we are taking aqueous okay molten may if we are taking molten sodium chloride so in that case the products will be sodium and chlorine now what will happen let's say uh, in molten nacl we are just having sodium and chloride so sodium will move to the cathode sodium ions they will get deposited at the cathode so you will find the sodium metal at the cathode whereas chloride ions move to the anode they will uh, lose electrons there okay and they will convert to chlorine gas simple but now if you are having aqueous nacl aqueous nacl may you will be having sodium ions chloride ions plus water bhi to hai na so that is also an electrolyte so here you will be having hydrogen and hydroxide ions to cathode ki taraf ab do ions jayenge that is hydrogen ions and sodium ions okay now there will be a competition for reduction okay between the sodium and hydrogen ions so which one will win in this competition you will find uh, it by looking at the reduction potential so you see higher the reduction potential more will be the tendency to get reduced at the cathode because just humne dekha class ki jitna zyada reduction potential hoga matlab us ion ki utni hi tendency hai to gain electrons and to get reduced so it means here out of sodium and hydrogen ions hydrogen ions have more reduction potential so sodium ions will not get reduced in this case you will be getting hydrogen gas hydrogen ion will gain electrons and they will you will be getting hydrogen ion so i told you na three products noh chlorine and hydrogen okay these are the three products aqueous nacl ke case mein aur uh, molten mein to do hi product rahenge sodium and chlorine to yahan par pata chala ki cathode par which one is uh, getting reduced okay so this is the reaction that we will be writing like h plus plus electrons give half h2 but h plus mil kahan se rahi hai by dissociation of h2o that is h2o gives h plus and oh now we will be uh, writing adding these two reactions okay इन दोनों रिएक्शन को एड कर देंगे सो इट विल बी एच टू प्लस इलेक्ट्रॉन गिव हाफ एच टू प्लस ओ एच माइनस ओके नाउ एट एनोड नाउ देर विल बी टू आइंस लाइक क्लोराइड एंड योर हाइड्रोक्साइड आइंस विल बी गोइंग देर ओके मीन्स ऑक्सीजन गैस या तो वहां पर लिबरेट होगी या क्लोरिन गैस अब अगेन अब यहाँ पर एनोड पर तो ऑक्सीडेशन होती है राइट तो हियर द रिएक्शन विच हैज लोअर वैल्यू ऑफ ई नॉट विल बी प्रेफर्ड नो क्योंकि ऑक्सीडेशन हो रही है सो इट शुड हैव लोअर रिडक्शन पोटेंशियल तो वाटर शुड गेट ऑक्सीडाइज इन प्रेफरेंस टू क्लोरीन बिकॉज उसका रिडक्शन पोटेंशियल कम है बट अगेन देयर कम्स द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ओवर पोटेंशियल आई टोल्ड यू दिस रिएक्शन विल बी काइनेटिकली वेरी स्लो दैट वी नीड टू प्रोवाइड एक्स्ट्रा वोल्टेज दैट विल नॉट बी फेवर्ड सो दैट इज वाई इन दैट पर्टिकुलर केस द रिएक्शन दैट हैपन्स इज द फर्स्ट वन so chloride ions will move to the anode and they will uh, give you chlorine gas okay so this is how you can summarize the reaction sodium chloride gives sodium and chloride ions so at cathode hydrogen gas will be liberated this you must know and at anode chlorine gas is liberated and this is the reaction so whatever na and oh ions you will uh, be left you will be finding it as naoh dissolved in the solution only okay so this was one such example of electrolyte or electrolysis ki how it happens so this thing that we have discussed now ki out of sodium or hydrogen ion which one gets discharged so we call it as preferential discharge okay so which one will be preferentially discharged at the cathode or at the anode so we call it as preferential discharge of the ions okay so now students we will be talking about the batteries okay so students now if i talk about the batteries that we use right so just try to recall ki where what are the uses of batteries like where do you use batteries in your day to day life and what is so special about the batteries why we are studying them here because those batteries that we are having okay so those batteries are actually your 
galvanic cells okay galvanic means the electrochemical cells which are in which the redox uh, the energy of the redox reaction is being converted to the electrical energy and that's what we are using okay so they are actually electrochemical cells where chemical energy is converted to electrical energy so if you look at the commercial cells that we are using these are of two types so students primary batteries are the ones that can be used just once ओके okay, एक बार उसको यूज कर लिया देन द रिएक्शन स्टॉप्स ओके एंड देन आफ्टर दैट यू कैन नॉट यूज इट लाइक ड्राई सेल्स अल्कलाइन बैटरीज ड्राई सेल्स दैट यू यूज इन योर लाइक ट्रांजिस्टर्स यू यूज इन योर वॉल क्लॉक्स वॉल क्लॉक्स में यूज करते ना ड्राई सेल्स सो दे आर प्राइमरी बैटरीज एक बार उस, वो खत्म हो जाता है देन वी रिमूव इट एंड वी चेंज द सेल नो हम उस सेल को तो दोबारा नहीं रिचार्ज कर सकते सो दैट्स एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ अ प्राइमरी बैटरी ना इफ आई टॉक अबाउट सेकेंडरी बैटरीज सो दे कैन बी यूज मोर देन वन एंड कैन बी रिचार्ज ओके फॉर एग्जाम्पल निकल कैडमियम लेट स्टोरेज बैटरीज जो कि हम अपनी ऑटोमोबाइल्स में यूज करते हैं कार्स में राइट वी आर यूज इन आर इन्वर्टर्स सो दे आर रिचार्जेबल बैटरीज सो लेट्स डिस्कस द केमिस्ट्री बिहाइंड दीज टू टाइप ऑफ बैटरीज सो इफ आई टॉक अबाउट द प्राइमरी बैटरीज विच इज योर ड्राई सेल एंड एल्कलाइन बैटरीज दिस इज हाउ इट लुक्स लाइक so what happens is the reaction actually occurs only once and after the use of uh, like after use over a certain period of time that battery will become dead okay so dry cell that we use which we call as like lanche cell also uh, after its discoverer which we use in our transistors and clock so there is a zinc container that acts as an anode and the cathode is the graphite rod okay so see this is the container which is your made up of zinc which act as the anode so this cathode uh, cathode is the graphite rod okay so this is your cathode which is the graphite rod which is surrounded by powdered manganese dioxide and carbon okay so here you have powdered manganese dioxide and carbon in this case all right so the space between the electrodes it is filled by a moist paste of ammonium chloride and zinc chloride okay so yahan par jo ye paste hai aapke paas this one so this will be a moist paste of ammonium chloride and zinc chloride okay fine uh, now what is the reaction that happens so again the reactions are complex but we can write it in a simple way like for anode let's say the oxidation of zinc will happen and at cathode manganese dioxide plus ammonium ions so ammonium ions are getting reduced in this case so you here you will be getting ammonia so in the reaction at cathode manganese is actually reduced from plus 4 oxidation state to plus 3 oxidation state okay so what happens is uh, this oxidation state you will see ki yahan par manganese ka jo oxidation state tha wo plus 4 tha in manganese dioxide now it has reduced to plus 3 now ammonia that is produced in this reaction it actually forms a complex with this zinc ions to give this uh, salt okay and this cell has a potential of nearly 1.5 volts okay so itna potential hoga and uh, so this is how your dry cell looks like now you know there are chote chote circular cells bhi aate hain jo aap apni wrist watches mein dalte ho have you seen gol gol se cells aate hain so they are actually mercury cells which are suitable for low current devices like jaise i told you hearing aids watches so usme kya hota hai zinc mercury amalgam hota hai as the anode you see here zinc mercury amalgam which will be acting as the anode and the paste of mercury oxide and carbon as the cathode okay mercury oxide and carbon they'll be acting as the cathode and jo aapka electrolyte hai it is a paste of koh and zinc oxide so this is the cell reaction that happens in this case uh, zinc mercury amalgam plus hydro so with the hydroxide ions you are getting zinc oxide and water and in cathode uh, mercury oxide plus water so here you are getting a uh, getting liquid mercury and hydroxide ions so in this case the cell potential it is around 1.35 volts and it remains constant during this life as overall reaction does not involve any ion as you can see in the overall reaction okay now if i talk about the secondary batteries so here you can have a look at the secondary battery student so you know the secondary cell or battery is the one which can be recharged by passing current in opposite direction so that it can be used again 
and a secondary battery or a cell can undergo a large number of discharging and charging cycles so the most important secondary cell is the lead storage battery okay which is used in automobiles and your inverters so there is a lead anode and a grid of lead packed with lead oxide as cathode okay so here you can uh, see lead oxide okay so which, this is your lead which is spongy all right so uh, these plates they are kept in a solution of sulfuric acid and water all right a 38 percent uh, solution of sulfuric acid is used as electrolyte okay so the cell reactions that are taking place here you can see so overall reaction we have written here now when we charge the battery the reaction is reversed and the lead sulfate on the anode and cathode is converted to lead and lead oxide here lead and lead oxide are converted to lead sulfate now so when reverse reaction will happen when we will be charging it so lead sulfate will be converted to lead and lead oxide there is one more which is your nickel cadmium cell which has longer life than lead storage uh, battery but it is not commonly used because it is more expensive to manufacture okay but just try to understand this is the reaction that is happening in this particular cell okay so so you need to remember the functioning of the lead storage battery don't go into detail for the nickel cadmium cell or battery okay so last one students are the fuel cells okay so we will be talking about what are the fuel cells now um, so actually students whenever we are producing electricity by thermal power plants or thermal plants it's not actually a very efficient method its efficiency is only around 40 percent okay and also it causes a lot of pollution as well okay so what happens in such plants the chemical energy which is your heat of combustion of fossil fuels it's first used for converting water into high pressure steam then that steam is used to run a turbine to produce electricity okay so burning of fossil fuel happens of course there would be pollution and the efficiency is also not very much now you know that uh, firstly we are converting the energy of burning of fossil fuels into uh, like to convert water into steam then then it is used to run turbine so there is a lot of energy loss in this case but in galvanic cell what happens directly the chemical energy of the reaction converts to electricity right electrical energy so that will be very efficient no so that's how it's possible to make such cells in which reactants are fed continuously to the electrodes and the products are continuously removed means we'll be continuously adding the reactants and just as a product banta jayega we'll be removing that okay so the galvanic cells are designed in that way only students to convert the energy of combustion of fuels like hydrogen methane methanol directly to electrical energy so yahan par energy loss jo hai wo कम होगा सो वन ऑफ द मोस्ट सक्सेसफुल फ्यूल सेल्स दैट वी आर यूजिंग इज बाय द रिएक्शन ऑफ हाइड्रोजन विद ऑक्सीजन टू फॉर्म वाटर एंड यू नो इट वाज यूज्ड इन द अपोलो स्पेस प्रोग्राम एज वेल फॉर प्रोवाइडिंग इलेक्ट्रिकल पावर सो द वाटर वेपर्स दैट वी आर गेटिंग इन दिस रिएक्शन ना दे वर कंडेंस्ड एंड दे वर एडेड टू ड्रिंकिंग वाटर सप्लाई आल्सो फॉर द एस्ट्रोनॉट्स सो व्हाट हैपेंस सी दिस इज द हाउ द सेल लुक्स लाइक ओके so hydrogen and oxygen are being fed there is this aqueous electrolyte and water vapors are there okay that are uh, produced in this reaction so these water vapors were actually condensed and added to drinking water supply so hydrogen and oxygen are bubbled through porous carbon electrodes so the electrodes that we are using are carbon electrodes okay which are porous and so so from here na if they are porous so of course the gases will move into the electrolyte okay so the electrolyte is concentrated aqueous sodium hydroxide solution that we are using and some catalysts are also added to this reaction like finely divided platinum or palladium for the uh, incorporating uh, so they'll be added to the electrodes for increasing the rate of electrode reaction so at cathode you can see oxygen gas will be losing electrons here and we are getting hydroxide and at anode this reaction will happen so overall reaction hydrogen plus oxygen we will be getting water so the efficiency of the fuel cells are 70% as compared to the 40% efficiency of the thermal plants okay so that's why it's a great uh, research we can say 
that has been done okay and many researches are still going on for the fuel cells this is one kind of a fuel cell that we have discussed that was involved uh, that was involving a chemical reaction all right so students that was the last topic of this chapter so today we talked about what is electrolysis how the electrolytic cells work okay what are the conditions of product formation then we saw the two different types of batteries primary and secondary batteries and then we learned about the fuel cells so with this our electrochemistry chapter is complete now you still have two more days to prepare for this uh, chapter and solve some numerical problems as well okay if you want me to explain any topic particularly or any important thing that you have not understood in this lecture so do let me know in the comment section okay so if you let me know in the comment section i can make a separate video lecture for you people before the bpt5 so that the concepts get clear okay but you people need to tell me ki ma'am we have not understood such so and so topic please explain or please explain how to solve this question if there is any question also you can let me know i'll put a separate video for that okay so we are here to help you all it says that you need to ask the things from us okay we are always ready to help you okay students all the very best for your bpt5 uh, watch all the three lectures of electrochemistry and again i am saying if you are having any doubts do let me know in the comment section or you can uh, connect with us using the telegram channel the link is provided in the description all right so see you soon in the next video lecture so until then take care students bye bye